Good morning, everybody. Or Jay here with another War of the Visions video, and today we are going to do Light Selection Quest 12 and 13. The only level 99 units challenge continues. We did 11 yesterday, but I was on stream, and let me tell you something. When you're streaming, it's freaking hard to do, like, quality tactical gameplay. You're trying to entertain the stream, talk the whole time, and it's not very entertaining when you just, like, quietly contemplate numbers. And people, people don't like to watch that. So, for 12 and 13, which are harder, I uh, had much more success alone in my bedroom, quietly doing it. So, here's the recordings. I'm going to walk you through it. Now, before I get into number 12 here, let me point out a couple things. The Mosheries TMR and Eunice TMR are important for me here. They give shields or protect and shell with some added healing. Uh, those shields and protecting and shell, there's a lot of AoE in this fight. So being able to survive that is important. You are allowed to heal in this fight, no problem. And the uh, the difficult missions to complete here are kill three units at the same time and win in less than 30 actions. I guess less than 31. You can get 30 actions or less, I believe is what it is. So you need to be efficient with your turns and you need to find a way to kill three things. Um, I'm going to pause right here and talk for a second. This formation, where I have Marielle in this slot right here, was really important for getting one of the carbuncles to come down at the beginning of the fight. And you're going to see that straight away. Uh, for you, if you're doing it, mess around with your formations and get those carbuncles to move where you want them to. I have one come down and I pick it off really early. It was an important part of this strategy. Okay, we're kicking it off. Now, there's two phases of this fight. The first phase is two carbuncles and three birds. Every one of these mobs is neutralizable um, in some means other than killing them. Now, this first carbuncle, like I said, comes down and I'm going to work on assassinating him here. You can see I'm kind of thinking through my options. And previously, what I would do is drain evocation here and then go for big AoE on the birds. Instead, I'm going to save those spells and just start working down this carbuncle a little bit. Now, here's an important move. I move Mariel to here and this right here is huge. That is height three disable from Calculator Mario. You can disable all three of these birds. They will still come at you and set up to be triple killed so you can you can um, get that achievement, but they will wombo combo the hell out of your group if you let them live. So I disable them right there and then I just kind of let things continue. Okay, we're going to keep working on old uh, Carbuncle here. We're going to keep setting it up. I'm just going to kind of walk you through it play by play. I will skip ahead at a lot of points in this, but these early turns are so dang important. You want to get off to a good start, and that's why moving this Carbuncle down and taking care of him early is a big deal. Now, with... Uh, with Grace right here, she is one of the MVPs of this fight. Grace has Mana Strike in her Lancer subjob, and you can Mana Strike these Carbuncles and take away all of their AP. That one I burn down, this one gets off one attack, and all that attack hits is Mariel. It barely does any damage to her, so it's really no big deal. At this point, Camilo's low on AP. I have him running his TMR here for the light attack buff. This helps me get that triple kill on the birds. I don't think I would have needed it. It might have been a better idea to give him an AP regeneration thing here. Not what I chose to do, though. What I'm going to do instead, the bird in the back here of these three, the back of their form formation, has more HP than the rest of the birds. So I'm going to hit that with a Drain Evoke, putting its HP low. That's really important here. Then I'm going to have Mariel scoot back a little bit. She's going to move right there. That's an important spot. She has to move to there for my comp to work. And then I'm going to have her soften all three of them up. Elshra is going to get my triple kill. She's powered up through Drain Evocation. The birds will be grouped. One of them will move, but you'll see where it moves. It's still fine. And that is the hardest achievement to get in this and still succeed in my opinion. So here's the birds. They move. They're in that little formation right there. And then here's an important thing. Mana Strike. Where that second carbuncle moves is also really important because Mana Strike has a range height of zero. So you need it to move there so Grace can move there, drain its AP, and that is no longer a threat. Carbuncle no longer can do his AoEs. Here's the Hazard Slash from Elshra, who is an MVP of all of these light selection quests. My triple kill's done. There's a zero AP carbuncle left and the second wave spawns in. Now here's the thing with the second wave and what you're going to kind of see playing out on the screen. There's a, still a lot of AOE. Those birds do a lot of AOE and they're not disable, disableable. Disableable. It's like being disabled, but able. Disableable. There it is. Wow. 
English language. Um, they're not. So you have to just kill them. You just you have to deal with them. You also cannot mana strike them. You'll see me kind of feel through that here in a minute. But the Lemure that spawns in is really out of position. Like she's way overextended. So you have a good chance to burn her down before she can start either doing damage to your group or supporting her harder hitting allies. She takes a lot of damage. So I'm just going to use Marielle and the squad here to kill her while setting up for the um, impending AoE extravaganza, and you'll see what I mean. I use the summon here from Fina. Summons are a really good way of boosting some of your lower damage units damage potential, right? Plus you give the attack and magic buff to your group. Garvel, importantly right here, um, moves in and jamming thrusts on Grace instead of casting his shield. I prefer that um, over letting him stand back there and get his buffs online. I'm going to go ahead and do a Drain Evoke here with Eltra, again, powering her up for her next attack. I'm going to have Grace kind of feel around here, see if I can Mana Strike anybody. And you'll see that the Mana Strike will not take, like, you can Mana Strike them, but it only takes away about 10% of their AP. That's really not worth doing, in my opinion. And she can't get to Garvel. So instead, what I'm going to have her do is move to Elshra, who is a very squishy unit, but super important for this comp, and then puts Knight Blessing on. This heals her to full HP and gives a shield to my squishiest unit. Then I'm going to have Camilo cast a Light Attack buff for my girls here. Mariel, in Sub Calculator, does a lot of work. I actually really like her in this sub. Um, instant cast spells, big AoEs, it's really nice. Now, here comes that Wombo that I'm talking about. Look at that damage. This is tough damage to deal with for a group of level 99s, but here's where my TMR buffs really shine. Notice Elstra still alive, that shield really doing work. I'm going to cast another shield here with the Purify TMR uh, from Mariel on my units, and I'm going to target the units that did not get the last shield. So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking through it right here. I'm like, oh, wait, I can actually hit all four and refresh Elstra Shield. This is a this is the kind of big brain play you make when you're not on stream trying to talk to people. Then Fina has a Eunice TMR so she can heal everybody up and give protect and shell. And now my squishier units have shields. They have protect. They have shell. They're full HP. We're looking good. Elstra is powered up from that last drainy vocation. So I think to myself here, is it better to look for Garvel and start setting him up, but even though she does max damage, it doesn't one-shot him. So I'm not gonna do that. If she was level 120, I think she could probably one-shot him there, but this is the level 99 challenge. Instead, we're going Hazard Slash on the birds and the Carbuncle. Carbuncle's dead and the birds are really low. It's Garvel's turn next. Um, Elstra's gonna just, wait, I think I just have her stand in place. No, she runs away. Be safe. Garvel Detonation Blast, it gets a couple people low. Camilo, that shield, pretty dang important, otherwise he might have died. But instead, it's my unit's turns. I can have Camilo drop an arm shot or something here. His damage in this fight is really not that great. This is not Camilo's best fight. And um, he was the unit I was thinking about 120-ing. Maybe had I 120'd him and built more for physical, he would have been better. For me, though, it was all about Mariel, Grace, and Elstra, and then everybody else is just kind of supporting them. I do have Camilo pick up the crystal just to keep his HP up. There's no penalty for picking up crystals in this, which is phenomenal. And then I can just look to heal. Like, Grace is here, no healing penalties on this one, so let's just top everybody off, play it safe, um, and then go for maximum damage, because you can't play it too safe on this one. You only have 30 actions, and I'm not counting them, but at this point, having done this as many times as I have, I know I'm I know I'm looking pretty good. Here comes a big AoE from Mariel, and you can see her damage potential is pretty dang good with this sub job. She kills the birds. It's only Garvel left. I have Fina and Elshra to finish him off. We'll just get a nice light chain going here. Bright shower from Fina, and then here comes Elshra for the kill momentarily. Here she comes. Steps forward. She's looking for it. She's looking for it. Drain Evocation, 9,999 damage. He's dead. And you'll see here that we check all the boxes. We get all, <laughs> importantly, we get party, and you can see which one I hadn't completed before. Party member's action count is no more than 30. That's tough. You have to be efficient um, and doing it with all level 99s. That's how I pulled it off. So there it is. Let's go on to number 13. Okay, let's talk about fight 13 next. Here's the special missions you have to clear. No KO'd units, pretty standard. That's like 
on every one of these things. Elemental chain of four or more, uh, not too bad, especially with who you get to fight on this. Recovering no more than 15,000 HP. 15,000 is a decent amount to be able to heal, so healing was still an important part of this fight for me. And then defeating three or more enemies simultaneously is on here. And then the very last one, clear all missions at the same time. So, uh, we're going to go to the beginning of this fight here in a second, but I didn't record my initial placement, so I'm going to go over to a different video so I can show you that after I show you my team comp. Let me jump forward here. Here's my team comp that I used. Note, I switched Vistral in for Fina, and even though he's holding Trousseau, Trousseau does have a little bit of attack on it, so I have him hold that. Magic damage still a big deal for me with Mariel and Eltra. Camilo, I switched to Rob's vision card to give him and Vistral just a little bit more hitting power. Uh, then I go for Bells on Mariel. That was a big one for me. It gives her AP, and she has a lot of really important attacks to pull off. For Grace, I wanted to keep her as fast as I could, and for Vistral, I give him Lucio's TMR for some AP regeneration for himself, and then a shield for Elstra. Okay, that's my comp. I am going to switch to a different video real quick to show you initial placement and then jump back into this one because I'm a noob and didn't record uh, my initial placement on the run where I actually cleared. Okay, so here's the initial placement. Um, I leave Camilo or Vistral over here by themselves. It really didn't matter which one. I have Grace right here, and then I go Elshra Mariel at the top. And I'm going to play this out in this video for the first minute, because I do this the same in the video where I actually clear. Elshra Mariel being up here is important because they are faster than Stern and can two-shot him. So I go Hazard Slash for nice big damage right there. Then I have Elshra Retreat. And then what Mariel does here is really important. I have her cast Banishra. It kills Stern, and then watch where I have her run. I have her run to right there. What this does is it baits Rob into just hitting her. He's just going to vortex render her over and over again. And instead of hitting my whole group for a bunch of damage that I have to heal, he just hits her sort of hard, and I don't worry about going to that 15,000 healing cap right away in the fight. That's an important moment. Now I'm going to switch back to the video where I actually clear the dang thing. Okay, here we go. You can see we picked up right where we left off. But Rob's already vortex rendered Mariel once. Prince Mott is moving, and with where I'm standing, Mott will cast Courage and then move like that. Now, what I'm going to do, here's a couple tips that I'm going to give you for the beginning of this fight. With all of these units, you can use AP attack from Grace to take their AP away. But the thing is, you have a lot of units on the board and only one Grace. So you've got to kind of pick and choose how you mitigate these units. For me, I'm going to immobilize Prince Mott. Um, Elstra can cast Immobilize with her Time Mage main job. And Mott is 100% weak to this. Like, he's going to get hit by it every single time. So he can just be made to stand there. And if Mott is made to stand still and is AP broken by Grace, he can't do anything. He's just going to be standing there doing nothing, and the adds won't spawn until after I've killed him. So I kill the other three first, and then I'm just going to let Mott like sit here, and it gives me so much time to just sit around. I can just keep him immobilized. I can get my people healed up, etc. It's no big deal. Also, when he attacks Elstra, if she has slow counter on, she will slow him, and now he can be slowed, he can be immobilized. It's wonderful for both giving you a break, right, in the middle of this fight to get your buffs back online, um, to, you know, get all the way healed up, etc., and... It gives you a chance to do a four elemental chain on him because even though the very last unit in this is a high HP boss, you might be low on AP by the time you get there, which could make doing an elemental chain hard. So for me, I like to just get my elemental chain out of the way on Prince Mott after I've killed the other two units. So that's what we're going to do right here. Notice Elshra did die. Um, that's a little bit of like a, you know, it's not the cleanest run, but full life does not count against your healing cap. So really, it's no big deal to let her die and then full life her. In fact, it saves me some healing I would otherwise have had to do. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead in the video a little bit while we kill Rob and Elda here and talk about the next like really important phase for me. 
Okay, so I skipped ahead a little bit. At this point, Rob, Elda, and Stern are dead. Prince Mott is immobilized, standing off by himself. His courage has already procced. He has one HP, and I just have Vistral standing over there next to him, ready to kill him. Then note how important what I'm about to say is. I have all of the rest of my units move over here. As soon as Prince Mott dies, four units are going to spawn on the screen right here where my mouse is, right here where I'm pointing. They're going to spawn right there. Um, you got to remember, you need to kill three units at the same time to complete all your missions here. And it's two time mages, a ruin stern, a gunner, and another unit, all of which can just get quickened a whole bunch by the time mages and wipe your party. So it's, you want to set up to just instantly wombo combo them. I'm going to hit play here. We're going to watch this play out. Now, Grace for me, the gunner spawns right here in this corner. I'm going to have Grace in position to mana strike him. He's not one of the units I'm going to kill as soon as he spawns. The straw is just chilling. I'm going to get buffs online right here. An important thing, like it's very hard to actually kill three of these units at the same time. So I'm going to give a light attack up buff to Elshra and Mariel, who are my two light comboing units here. And then Elshra has a buff. She has um, Hazard Spell, which will boost her magic damage for three turns. So she has light attack up for three turns. She has her magic damage up for three turns. And at this point, I'm ready to kill Prince Mont. Let the adds spawn and then wombo combo him down. So Vistral, well, do your thing, Vistral. He's thinking about it. Wait, I'm going to I'm gonna buy another turn. Right here, what I'm thinking is this. I really want to make sure, and this is an important note, by the way. Um, I really want to make sure that Elshra and um, Mariel go very, very close to each other. You can see I use a little CT manipulation there to make sure um, that they will both go before the ads that spawn get a turn. That, uh, I lost this fight, a, I didn't lose the fight, I lost clearing all my missions on this fight a couple of times because the ads would spawn, my units would all be over here, but like either Elshra or Mariel would end up going after they went, that's no good. That's no good. You got to make sure they go before those units get a turn so they can chain them down together. One other thing about Prince Mott, if you let him live, he'll go collect a bunch of crystals once he's not immobilized. Um, that sucks. Okay, I kill him with Wave Cannon here to get the attack and magic buff for my whole group. And here's the ads. Ruinstern, Time Mage, Time Mage, Knight or something. I don't know, another ad. And then the Gunner spawns. So now I need to combo them down. Banishaga from Elshra will hit them all pretty hard. Notice though, those Time Mages... Since they're not dark units, don't take a ton of damage from this. So to ensure that I kill at least three, what I do is I'm going to have Camilo hit the one in the front. Now, I could look for a dive right here. That's really dangerous. I don't want to accidentally kill one of them. And then I can't, you know, then there's not three left alive to all get killed at the same time. So instead, I'm just going to poke him. This guarantees that three of them are definitely low enough to get killed by Elstra. Then I'm going to have Grace run back here. She's going to mana strike the gunner. He's out of AP. He's not a threat. All he's just an auto attack bot now. And then here's the biggest move of the game. Hazard slash on these boys. Four kills. We've checked the box. We've killed at least three units at the same time. That will spawn Omega, who puts a little defense shield on himself. Guys, Omega in this fight's like not a big deal. Um, some people yesterday on stream were like, oh, you're going to be really annoyed by Omega. Not really. Like... Honestly, at this point, I'm just walking it down. Uh, we're going to kill that gunner first. I really don't want him getting his AP back. Um, I do have a little bit of healing left that I could do because I haven't had to heal much yet in this fight, but I'm not worried about that. I'm just going to go ahead and murder this gunner and then just beat Omega to death. Like, it's really pretty simple. I don't know that I even need to show the rest of this. He's lower. We did it. We did it. Here, let's, let's go back to the moment of triumph here. He's low. Oh my gosh. Mariel, she's sitting in there. What's she going to do? Hard slash. It's actually Vistral. Boom. His shield's down. So that's 4,700 damage. You can do it, Eltra. Finish him off. Here it is. Banish Blade. 8,000 damage. Boom. Omega is dead. And we have cleared all the missions. I actually thought that mission 12 was harder than mission 13. Um, but we can do it. There's all. There's every single one of these being cleared. With level 99 units, who, by the way, like I said, were not even all the way maxed out. Why do I think that's important? Like, why is this something that I wanted to do? Um, it's because I, I get a lot of messages 
in my videos when I talk about selection quests. And one of the problems a lot of people have with selection quests is they say that um, there's something that like they're not willing to invest blossoms, which are a very rare resource, by the way, into MR units to make these doable. Um, so I do think if you have a strong enough account, my vision cards right here, all maxed out. Like don't, don't take, don't take that for granted. I do have a very strong account anyway, but I'm not using the ideal espers here, right? I'm just kind of not, um, I'm just using what espers I had resonance on and I'm just using level 99 units and I was able to do it. So it was fun. I really, really enjoyed this. I'm looking forward to, uh, maybe EXing Camilo after this so he can take advantage of that spear and crush some people in PVP. All right, guys. Hope you learned something from this. I had a lot of fun doing it, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.